welcome to episode four of the Tethering Berlin podcast. My name is Ellie. Um, we will have a lot of noise in the background today because a um, young man is literally just by the side of me on the floor playing with some toys. Hopefully he won't be uh, climbing up me all too soon. Um, been lots of happenings around here recently, mainly because, well, we've all had the stinking cold that's been going around. Um, lasting about three weeks as well, so it's a bit crazy. And young man has now just climbed up on my word here. Hey, can you say hiya? Fingers crossed he doesn't pull anything off the table. Um, right, yeah, so we've all had this stinking cold. Um, I had no voice at one point. James has had it for three weeks. Little one's had it for three weeks. We ended up going to out of hours. Oh, all sorts of fun and games. Um, anyway, on with the knitting. So, knitting. <laughs> In my lovely bag, which I'll talk about in a moment. I am still knitting my Heath socks. So last time I think you saw our uh, my hoe, my uh, half-finished object, um, with my knit one, slip one heel. And I'm now almost, I'm travelling down the foot as we speak, on the second sock for myself. So the fact that I've been taking so long to get around... Uh, get round these ones and knit these ones up means that uh, dad's birthday socks are going to be a bit late so uh, my Heath socks um, this is pretty much all I've been knitting on um, haven't had a huge amount of time little one has been not sleeping very well uh, which means he's been down sitting with us in the lounge quite a lot in the evenings and uh, with me being ill as well um, it's not made for good amounts of knitting, to be fair. Um, so I haven't tackled anything at all off my works in progress um, list of shame. Um, yeah, so that is my only knitting um, for this time. Um, I'll put that somewhere easily accessible. Um, sewing. On to sewing. Um, this month I've actually managed to do quite a bit. Um, I have sewn myself an Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons. There's the pattern there, an Agnes top. I have made this top out of black jersey and some of the leftover stripy fabric that I had from doing William's trousers and his t-shirt that I made the other week. Uh, so there's the stripy sleeves and around the neck band and then the main part of the top I've done in black sorry it's a bit <laughs> higgledy piggledy because somebody's yanking on the bottom end of it here so I've uh, zigzag top stitched all the all the sleeves and how well if you can see that at all there on the black on black probably not um, so I've zigzag top stitched it all and I've tried it on I'll try and insert a photo of it here Right, on to other things then. Um, I have also made myself a cocoa dress. Again, another Tilly and the Buttons pattern. I love these patterns. They are so simple to sew. Um, and they're really easy actually to upsize for, for bust sizes and all sorts. Um, apologies for the movement to the camera. Little one is now swinging on the table below me. Hang on a second. Right, sorry, where was I? Um, right, so I've been sewing myself a Tillian Buttons cocoa dress. And um, yes, I do. I adore these patterns. They're so simple to sew. Um, I acquired myself some purple jersey um, because a friend of mine is getting married next weekend now. Um, my bestest, bestest friend in the world. We've known each other since we were 11. She's getting married next weekend and I needed something to wear for the wedding. Uh, so I've made myself a cocoa dress. I shall try and insert some photos of it here. Excuse me. I have also 
been rather busy. The little one's back holding on to bits of fabric that I've got on the edge of the table here. Been rather busy and I have cut out all of the curtains I now need to make for the rest of, for the, rest of the house. So this is my kitchen curtain fabric. <laughs> with a little hand in the bottom there trying to grab hold of it. And these two are my lounge ones. So this one is going to be for the base of all the curtains in the lounge. And let's chuck that over there. This is going to be my lounge curtains. So they are all now cut out, ready to sew when we're down here for a week fairly shortly. Are you saying hiya? Would you like to jump up and say hello? Oh, say hiya. Hiya. No, we're not having hold of the camera. Can you say hiya? <laughs> go on, down you go. So, um, so that's all my sewing and bits and pieces that I've been uh, getting on with this last time. Um, acquisitions then, the purple jersey obviously for the cocoa. Um, I've also bought some more fleece fabric. Um, I don't know if you remember the sheepy pyjamas I made myself. I'm going to make myself some elephant pyjamas. I'll try and insert a picture of the fabric here. For the elephant pyjamas. Um, my other acquisition has been this lovely little bag. I am totally and utterly in love with this little Harry Potter bag. All the little characters on it. It's from Thimble and Thread Makes and I ordered three. So um, myself, Jenny and Zoe, uh, Zoe of Pins and Needles and Jenny of Owl About Yarn, we all have one matching bag. So this is what I'm now currently touting around my socks in. So it is the perfect size for a pair of socks. Absolutely perfect. I am absolutely in love with it. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Jenny um, of Owl About Yarn and Zoe of Pins and Needles and I have decided we are going to do a cal, a knit along. Um, it is running from yesterday, the 1st of April, to the 31st of May. Um, it's entitled the Three Amigas Cal. So the instructions now for this cal. I've got to get this right. They've both told me about three times and my memory at the moment with the lack of sleep and everything is absolutely shocking. So it's the Three Amigas Cal and use that for the hashtags on Instagram and Twitter. Um, it's 200 metres minimum yardage of uh, something spring related. The chat for this cal is going to be in the Pins and Needles Ravelry group. The finished object is to be posted in the Owl About Yarn um, Ravelry group and the prize announcement will be in the Tuthin Brin Ravelry group. You need to be a member of each group um, to qualify for this cal. Um, no works in progress and um, Jenny, Zoe and I are each going to donate a prize. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to be do donating just yet. I will have a think about that one and uh, get back to you hopefully in the next podcast for that. So, happenings on the farm. Been very, very, very busy down here. Um, in between being ill and whatnot, and the farm has taken up quite an awful lot of time recently. We've had a digger in and he has cleared the slurry pit and... I'll take you out and do a bit of videoing of that in a bit. We have had the fences down, the trees have all been planted, and things are really starting to sprout again on the farm, which is really nice to see. So I think I should take you out and do a bit of videoing for this. So, as you can see then from the video of the digger, um, we've had the slurry pit cleared and now this is the, we've had the bank restored all the way along 
Up the top there in the top corner is the lovely daffodils, our Croft 16 daffodils from my aunt and uncle up in Scotland. And here is going to be our new veg growing patch. So if I walk down the slope into the pit, wouldn't have been able to do this before. James has been digging what now looks like canals um, because we've ordered a polytunnel to come on in here. Um, unfortunately the uh, ground is very waterlogged so we've uh, broken up the concrete at the bottom here and that has uh, helped to improve the drainage a wee bit and put in, if the dog will get out of the way long enough, a drainage pipe down there at the bottom of the bank. Um, if we walk along the side here, very sloppy and squelchy. We've had the bottom end of the slurry pit sorted as well. There's another one of James's canals for the end of our slurry pit. You can see all the little flies buzzing around all this because uh, obviously quite a lot of the content of that part of the pit is now muck. So you can go on. Oh, gold dog. The dog has just gone face first into a pile of absolute disgusting yuck. So we've had the bank here taken out. Look at the state of her yuck. Um, we've had the bank taken out here at the back of the what was the worst part of the slurry pit and it's been cleared and it's quite nicely levelled all the way round and this is going to be where we put the fruit cage for all our berries and whatnot. So that takes you out into the field then behind the slurry pit where all our new fencing and tree planting has gone on. So walking down then past the barns, we have a yard ahead of us, that's been cleared a lot by the little man and his digger and the tractor. This is the top end now of the slurry pit and there is a little bit of a drop now into the slurry pit so that's one thing we're going to need to get sorted out get this uh, fenced or gated before little man is too big and then we've got the track that James and I made all that time ago if you look back on the blog it was quite a while ago down there this pile here that's still left in the yard is for spreading but all the other stuff then that's been taken out has been piled up to make a really decent bank then along the back of the slurry pit. We've still got a few bales of silage and then to put some of the earth back in we've had, I don't know how well you can see that going into the sun there, we've had the bottom half of this bank came out as far as about here, oh no a bit further about there where that little bit of grass is, we've had all that bank taken right back to give us enough topsoil to go into the slurry pit. So that's the track going up the side of our barns. So this is the view back up the track and where the bank has been taken out. The view back across what's going to be so the veg patch and the fruit cage. And then if we need to, we will change the use of this piece of land here into extended veg garden. We're going to see how we get along first of all. There's all our fencing. I don't know how well this is going to come out, but circling around up by those pylons is a rather large kite. I'm now the other side of the bank from the slurry pit and this is where the pipe is coming out. So he's left a good long length of pipe there. I think James has plans on some of this to help drain all the slurry pits out. So it's good to see that there's a nice drop actually from this side. Our fencing now did stop about there. Now goes all the way down 
to the stream that you might be able to hear in the background. That little stream then runs on down into the larger stream then that runs through our woodland right at the bottom. So this is our rather messy orchard at the moment. Need to get the mower out but all the trees are starting to bud and hopefully we'll have a bit more fruit off them this year. We had about two buckets of apples last year uh, which James has made a demi jello cider out of and we've eaten some of the eaters. Um, we've got a complete mix in here of eaters um, and cookers and cider apples. So it should make for some good cooking up and eating and drinking. As you can see, we've had quite a lot of rainfall here now, the last uh, couple of weeks. The dog about to go into the water, typical. Mind you, it might wash off some of the muck she got on her earlier. So it's coming full bore across uh, the road, this lovely spring water. And it goes off down a very deep chasm. carves its way down through the hillside past all those willows that you can see starting to bud there. Other happenings then on the farm, um, James and I hired another big van at the other weekend and we have moved an awful lot of bits and pieces down to the farm. So my stash is now pretty much all at the farm, um, permanently now, and um, we've moved books and bookshelves. Um, we've also made a little list of things we want to buy from Ikea for the farm. Um, need to increase storage here because we haven't got an attic, whereas we do in our current house. And actually, house storage wise, we need to we need to get some storage in before we move down. Um, similarly, we've got quite a bit of furniture that's not going to come into the house. It's going to be for when we renovate the tin hut. So we need somewhere to store that. So we're thinking about some storage sheds, maybe in one of the barns um, to sort of alleviate that problem. So we don't get the furniture that we want stored um, all mussed up by being just actually out in the barns. So, um, lots going on. 